In today's video, we'll be talking about sleep apnea. So sleep apnea is a condition where we have respiratory dysfunction during sleep. So what actually happens is we have the cessation or the stopping of breathing while the patient is sleeping and this can occur several times in one night. It can either occur once or it can occur in cycles. Here is an example of what sleep apnea can look like. So as you can see, we have a period of lack of breathing or shallow breathing, and then it's followed by a loud snore. So there are three different types of sleep apnea. We have obstructive and central, and we have mixed, which is a combination of the two. Obstructive sleep apnea is the most common form of sleep apnea. So it's where we have the relaxation of the soft tissues in the throat. So when you're lying down due to several risk factors, we have relaxation of the soft tissues in the back of the throat, which actually block the airways. And you can see that from this diagram here. So the risk factors include obesity, uh, increasing age and smoking, also respiratory infections and uh, chronic respiratory diseases like asthma also are a risk factor as well. The treatment for obstructive sleep apnea include lifestyle changes like losing weight, stopping smoking and treating any respiratory infections. Um, another treatment method is sleeping with a 30 degree elevation. So this angle stops the airways of the throat getting blocked also sleeping on the side has the same effect. We can also use an oral appliance which looks like this and it's known as a mandible advancement device. This also prevents the soft tissues in the back of the throat blocking the airways and surgery to remove excessive soft tissue um, can also be done as well. Something that can be used for obstructive sleep apnea as well as central sleep apnea is this continuous positive airway pressure. So with this we have a mask which is placed over the nose while you're sleeping and this mask is going to be attached to a small pump that supplies a continuous amount of pressurized air to hold open the upper airway. So this is used for the treatment of obstructive sleep apnea and central sleep apnea. Now, central sleep apnea has a different cause than obstructive sleep apnea. With central sleep apnea, the problem is with the respiratory control center in the brain. So it's not sending signals properly to the muscles of the respiratory system. So what happens is the person who has central sleep apnea physically stops breathing for about 30 seconds to a time. And this occurs in several cycles throughout the night while they're sleeping. Now, this doesn't happen for a very long period of time, otherwise the person will die from hypoxia. But what happens is they fall asleep, the respiratory control center misses a few of the signals for one or two breaths. So there's a gap in breathing for about 30 seconds. We have elevation of carbon dioxide levels in the blood. And then the person will wake up and they'll uh, have a period of rapid breathing and then it will return back to normal and then about an hour later for example they have another episode so this repeats throughout the night where they have a period of uh, stopping breathing for a very short amount of time and then a period of rapid breathing now the key difference between obstructive and central sleep apnea is the cause uh, obstructive sleep apnea is due to the blockage due to the soft tissues of the airways, but central sleep apnea has a more neural cause. When you're looking at a patient and you're trying to decide whether this person has obstructive or central sleep apnea, with obstructive sleep apnea, you can see a struggle to breathe because of the blockage. So the patient is still trying to breathe. So they have a period of struggling before they can eventually take a breath. With central sleep apnea, this struggle does not appear. So there's no straining of the chest or of the muscles and the patient isn't trying to take a breath. They're just, they're just not breathing during the episode. And then when they wake up, they'll just have a period of fast breathing and then it'll go back to normal.
the risk factors associated with central sleep apnea include some kind of brain injury like from a stroke or from trauma, opioid medication and Parkinson's disease. The treatment methods for central sleep apnea include continuous positive airway pressure which is also used for obstructive sleep apnea as well. So this is that mask which is placed over the nose and it forces uh, breathing due to the pressure. Adaptive servo ventilation is another device that can be used and the main difference is you can adjust the amount of air that you're going to inspire in and if you haven't taken a breath in a while it can force or it can deliver a breath of air depending on the time between breaths. And some medications can also be given as well such as acetazolamide and theophylline which is used to stimulate breathing in central sleep apnea.